What's happening, fish and friends? Welcome to another episode. It is that time of year. Spring fishing is going to be in full effect here in Iowa soon. Heck, uh, you southern guys are already in fishing, pre-spawn, spawning fish on beds. It's crazy to think that. Um, I got out a couple hours the other day and was able to catch one fish, but half the ice, or half the ice, half the pond still had ice on it. So we're right on the verge of getting into that spring fishing. But today we're going to talk about some spring fishing favorite lures of mine. It's one of the most common questions uh, I'm asked all the time. I get DMs and questions on videos. Well, today we're going to talk about that. My top five lures for bass fishing. And I'm going to put a special emphasis on fishing from the bank. Bank anglers just don't get enough love out there. I don't know if people don't think it's cool enough or, or whatever, but not wasting any time here. Lure number one is the lipless crankbait. For the last three years, the first fish of the year for me has come on a lipless crankbait. Now this year it came on a gold cotton cordell super spot. You can get these cheap at Walmart still, I don't know, $2.99 or whatever, $3.79, but usually they have them on sale. Keep your eye out, but super spots a great cheap lure and you know from the bank i know a lot of guys who are afraid of throwing treble hook lures for that reason they don't want to lose them right they bank fish well i've kind of got some things to talk about today that'll help but the lipless crankbait the past three years last year it was uh my own red custom painted uh lipless the year before that i want to say it was a red eye shad in like that chartreuse sexy shad color so the fish don't want something crazy erratic you know they're not not looking at some insane flopping all around lure they want something with a tight wobble a little bit of vibration you can even go with a silent uh, if it's you know clean clear water but a lipless crankbait does that so well look at that profile there real slender real flat when you look at it from the nose on the nose has just a little bit of a flat top to it right on there and that's what allows that nice tight wobble it doesn't have a big bill that's doing a big crazy searching action tight wobble with a nice rattle now like i said they make these in all different types they've got silent ones they've got some with you know kind of loud rattle bb's the spot more of a higher pitch tinny or for example the booyah one knocker a much more silent natural sound you're gonna have to kind of test and see what works in your area um, i hear the more bb louder sound mimics like a shad more whereas the one knocker is supposed to mimic crawfish more but Early spring is a great time to do that and go out and test treble hook lures because a lot of that vegetation hasn't grown up yet. You know, there might still be some remnants of it, but just as those grass lines are starting to come up, you know, into the early spring is a great time to throw a lipless crankbait and, and rip it out of there. And I'm not talking about like rip it as hard as you can when that water's still cold, just kind of leaning on it. It'll kind of pull it out and flutter. And a lot of times you'll get a reaction strike off that. But you know, in spring, you've got those fish coming up shallow. You can crank and wind one of these. Like I was saying, one of my favorites is just a cheap cotton cordell super spot. You can cast it shallow, bounce it off rocks, um, get it, you know, kind of stuck in grass, pull it out. Now, as far as colors, um, I can't deny that red catches bass early spring. There's all kinds of different theories on it from red crawfish to bass can see red better early spring based on the way they see in the color spectrum. All kinds of stuff out there. I don't know the real answer, but I didn't get on the red lure bandwagon until probably about five years ago. Randizzle and I were joking about it, and it was with the red lipless early spring. Um, and I destroyed and probably caught, I don't know, nine that, that day on these. Now, once you start to get some sun in dirtier water, I like going with a gold. That goldish chrome does well in dirty water. It gives it a flash when you've got, you know, the sun out. If it's cleaner water and you want a flash, I'll just go with like a straight silver. And, of course, you get like the Rayburn red, which is kind of like a mix of both. It's like a shiny almost chromish red so again play with it uh play with different things in your area you can even go um like with this the berkeley war pig that's a bright orangish red i remember last year my buddy nate and i were fishing he was throwing a six cents in like an orange color was having really good luck and i was throwing a one that i had painted in red on having good luck so that orangish reddish uh, but i mean there's different brands out there the berkeley war pig cotton cordell super spot uh of course the strike king red eye shad the Booyah One Knocker, um, those are some of my favorites. You can get into the more expensive, uh, you know, like the Lucky Craft LV500s and stuff. Those are going to have a different action. Um, and guys usually fishing stuff like that out deeper where you're kind of bouncing it off the bottom. Early spring, just a regular slow straight retrieve works. Kind of vary up your depth to try to find those fish. But you can work a yo-yo. Last year, Randizzle and I got on a day that was amazing where it was a windblown point. It was a gradual drop-off going back up into a, a cut of this lake. And we were yo-yo and lipless. And we caught, we were getting our butt kicked that day and I ended up catching like, I don't know, 10, 15 fish on that one spot in like 45 minutes time. And after that, it was off. 
So remember in springtime, you're looking for feeding windows. It might be nothing, nothing, nothing until you find a spot where those fish are congregated. They'll do that early spring, be bunched up. Once you find one, spend more time there. There's a good chance you're gonna find more than that single fish there. Um, and also remember in the springtime, the north side of the lake is generally gonna warm up faster. When the water is so cold like this in the 40s, if you can find you know, 45 compared to 49 on the north end of the lake, go there. Generally, you're gonna find more fish in that warmer water. Um, of course, your staging points, that's gonna work different for small lakes and ponds and such, but look for warmer water, vary up your retrieve, throw that lipless, great lure for early spring. Lure number two, let's talk about some suspending jerkbait action. Suspending jerkbaits are great early spring because, you know, like I was saying, those fish are still kind of lethargic. The water's cold, fish are cold-blooded, so they're not, you know, amped up yet. Uh, you know, when they they get warmer and their metabolism is higher, they're still going to be a little, eh, you know, they're not crazy. So suspending jerkbait is a great way to put a lure in front of those fish, keep it suspended there, and draw reaction strikes when other things, they just can't. You know, with the jerkbait, you're casting out, reeling it down to its depth, and then pop, pop, pause pop, 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 pause. And you're gonna have to vary that retrieve. On those pauses, you have to do just that. Don't reel in your line, don't move it. You want that jerk bait to ch -ch slash and then just stop on a dime. And suspending means it's just gonna sit there. It's not gonna float up and it's not gonna sink. It, ideally, it's gonna suspend kind of nose down and just hang out there. And usually on that pause, that might be anywhere from five seconds to 15 seconds, depending on how cold your water is. Vary up that pause. Remember, you're not ripping it super hard early spring. You know, it's going to be kind of like pop, pop, maybe an extra pop, and then let it sit. Um, but, you know, putting that bait in front of them, having it stall there, that's what the bait fish are doing, right? Bait fish in the cold water are doing the same thing. They're not zipping around everywhere 90 mile an hour. They're still kind of lethargic, too. So, throwing that suspending jerk bait, and you might be saying, well, Debo, how am I going to do that from the bank? You know, a lot of the ponds and stuff I fish might only be six feet deep. There's different types of jerk baits out there. So you can go with something like this. The Sixth Sense Provoke was um, my most producing jerk bait from last year. Had a day on the boat where I caught 30 some fish uh, on just this. It was in the 4K shad color, but great jerk bait. And you can go to other things. You know, the Rapala uh, Husky Jerk was a, a one that I used a ton in the past. Some of these new KVD, the little 100s I picked up. And this is just a little guy, what, three, three and a half inches is all. See, it's just got the two little hooks on it, but that's a suspending jerk bait. It's not going to dive as far, four to seven feet, but the heavier line you put on a jerk bait, so for example, fluorocarbon is what I always fish my jerk baits on, the heavier line you go with, the, the shallower it's going to keep that lure, right? So if I go with an eight pound or six pound fluorocarbon on this, it's going to allow that bait to get deeper, closer to its maximum depth. If I end up fishing this on, say, like 12-pound fluorocarbon, it's going to keep it up higher in the water column. Uh, same thing if you're going with like a mono, a bigger mono, mono floats, it's going to keep it up higher in that water column. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, maybe you have to go over to a, a you know, a spinning rig to fish something like this. But remember, you've got different sizes of jerk baits. Not all jerk baits are going to be big, huge, gargantuan things like this old bomber. You've got different types out there. So try different types try different sizes and match it to the, the the water that you're fishing you know if you're not fishing a, a 30 foot deep reservoir you don't need a, a 15 foot diving jerk bait right vary it up vary that size now when it comes to colors um, i like like an opaque whitish color when it's kind of low light conditions that way it makes a good silhouette as the sun comes out i'll either go to like a real translucent if it's real clean water uh, like this guy here a nice translucent see-through color real natural looking or if you got some wind and chop on the water and it's sunny out, I'll go to something kind of chrome. Again, that's just kind of what I go by uh, as a rule of thumb. You know, you might only have bluegill in your pond and throwing just a straight up bluegill pattern like that provoke there, whether it's sunny, low light, whatever, always produces for you. So mix it up, but that's kind of the colors I go with and how I kind of judge what I'm gonna throw. Another little tip for fishing jerk baits from the bank is, you know, as you're fishing that jerk bait from the bank, usually you're working it with rod tip down right but if you've got jet you know fishing jetties or like a little dip uh, a little like creek channel or something that you're fishing as that lure gets closer to you i'm going to lift my rod tip up and pop it up i'm going to try to direct that lure up toward me as i'm working it up the bank you know and you also might want to go with uh, a jerk bait that just very very slowly floats you can see on here it says it's a floating slash suspending jerk bait and it's going to depend on that water temperature so if you can get uh, a jerk bait that just 
real slowly floats. That might be what you want to go with if you're fishing those jetties and stuff, just so you're not getting hung up all the time. All right, lure number three. How can we talk about early spring fishing without bringing up the old finesse jig? Rand Dizzle's probably going to come over here and drop kick me. Uh, he opened my eyes to the finesse jig uh, years ago, uh, and I've slowly kept gaining, you know, interest in him and fishing him more as the years go on. But last year, probably my most productive bait, probably caught more fish. Uh, well, I would say probably the frog caught the most fish last year, but um, it was close. The finesse jig. The finesse jig produced a ton for me last year, a lure that I gained exponentially more success and confidence in. You know, early spring for me, whoops, oftentimes I was throwing that Ned rig, right? And you can kind of interchange the finesse rig or the finesse jig with the Ned rig depending on where you're fishing and how, but either one does great. We're going to talk about the finesse jig this year just because I've loved it so much. And of course, I've started making some of my own finesse jigs. That's a whole different journey, but you know, it's so fun because you can get exactly the hooks you want, the head size you want, colors you want. Uh, you know, it's just so much fun creating that stuff and catching a, a fish on a lure that you've made. It's crazy. But the thing with finesse jigs is earlier in the year, like I was saying, the, the warmer water is what you're gonna wanna try to find. And oftentimes those spots um, that are getting the sun, you know, the shadier banks, especially if they have rock, like a rocky fishing jetty, that's a great place to look because rocks hold heat. And of course the crawfish are starting to come out. Um, you know, fish aren't just keyed in on bait fish during the spring, uh, they're still eating crawfish as well. So those crawfish are gonna be coming out to those rocks. Great way to mimic that is with a little finesse jig. And if you're new to jig fishing, I can't stress how awesome a finesse jig is because it's not a big, huge profile. You're not looking for that one big fish. A finesse jig will catch numbers, it catches size. You know, it's not a big, huge, crazy, intimidating profile. Um, you know, it's just a, a nice small jig. And I like fishing a 5 16 ounce from the bank. I feel like you get hung less. Um, I know like Randizzle, for example, likes to fish a 3 8 Find what works for you, but I try to go with as light as I can get away with so I'm not getting snagged in those rocks as much. Now, another thing to remember, early spring fishing, that water's still cold. Fish are lethargic. Randizzle's told me before, what am I doing? I know what, I need to slow down, right? And if you're fishing real early spring in that real cold water and you feel like you're fishing your jig too slow, slow it down some more. Slow is the name of the game. You know, those crawfish aren't coming out of the rocks and scurrying all around. The water's cold, they're cold, they're gonna be moving really slow. Um, and oftentimes, early spring, you're not even gonna feel that fish hit. Right, they're still you know, kind of slow moving, they'll just kind of slurp it, and you might just barely see your line moving, so make sure you're watching your line. You come down to join me, Mr. Stubbs? What are you doing, stubby dog? You wanna tell all these nice people hi? Yeah, you had to be in on the video, you found me? You didn't know I was down here filming? No, you can't get up on my lap, I know. But anyway, finesse jigs, slow down, slow hops or even a drag. You've kind of got to vary it. Usually I'm a real small hop guy and I'm always big on feeling the line with my finger, right? Because those bites are so subtle, they'll either just pick it up or you'll lift up and something will feel different. Like it's kind of a weird weight, swing on them. You know, if you're in doubt, swing on it. Uh, you don't get charged for every time you swing the, the rod. So when in doubt, swing for the fences. Okay, when it goes for brands and colors, well, obviously one of our favorites, Rand Dizzle's favorite, uh, is the War Eagle Heavy Finesse Jig. Huge proponent of it. I'm surprised he doesn't own uh, half of War Eagle now with as many of these as he's bought and lost, but um, great option there. The only thing I don't like is 3 8 is the smallest that they come in. Um, like I said, 5 16 is my favorite, so I've kind of been experimenting. Um, the Beast Coast Hybrid, the Hustler Finesse Jig. Had great luck on that last year. We had a tough day. Um, I managed to put some fish together, and my two biggest fish came off that color right there, that blue craw color. Um, both, one was just under four and one was like a three and a quarter, but um, the two best fish that day, early spring again on a little finesse jig. Now, of course, green pumpkin with like a little bit of blue or just a straight green pumpkin is always my go-to. I'm gonna try fishing some more of the red stuff this year. So they've got like a Rayburn red color that's awesome. It's got some of that flashaboo in it. It's got some marabou hair in it. This was in the thing, so you can't really see it, but once that water comes out and gets in that hair, it's just a real natural undulating kind of flow um, without putting any action on it, not hopping it, bouncing it, just sitting there, and this is just kind of sitting there undulating. Uh, it's hard for fish to, uh, to not want to eat that. So anyway, from Beast Coast, love their stuff. Uh, the Jewel Finesse Jigs, these were things I tried out last year, had some good luck with them. Um, very similar to like the War Eagle, a little bit different, but a uh, good price and you get two in a pack. The Molex Nano Jig, I've had a bunch of people ask for me to try that one. I've not fished it yet, um, but it looks pretty good. I'm going to try that this year and I'll give you some feedback. And then another one, I saw that Cumberland Lures came out with this little Bitsy 
finesse jig, like their Procaster jig. Um, I used to fish their older Procasters back in the day, which is just like a kind of like a swim jig, just a regular cast and retrieve jig. But these little guys, they've got those in like a little quarter ounce, and they have little wire uh, brush guards on them, which is unique and different. You don't see that in a lot of stuff. Um, so excited to try those, see what we can find. But that's just some of my favorites. Uh, I'm going to try that red for early spring. Green pumpkin's my all-around favorite. And then, of course, once you get into that dirtier, stained, muddy water, um, we like to go with the black and blue. I know, uh, like Randizel and I have talked, we have a lot of those craws here. When we found them dead or the pinchers and such, they have a blue belly or blue claws on them. Um, so I think like a green pumpkin blue or a black and blue mimics that really well. Okay, moving on to lure number four. We are talking about swim baits, specifically soft plastic paddle tail swim baits. Such an awesome way to fish in cold water. Uh, you know, paddle tail swim baits, I feel like are something that people really love or hate, right? They've, they've got places where they fish them and have a lot of luck or they're throwing them and they're like, I don't know, they look good, but I can never catch a fish on them. A regular paddle tail swim bait on just a regular little jig head like that with an open hook You've got a good hookup chance. You've got a good chance of getting a fish like that where it's a big exposed hook, right? Um, you can just slow roll this on the bottom, so trying to keep as much bottom contact as you can and just slow cranking that swim bait. Just slow crawling it across. It's got a nice subtle action on it, you know, with that boot tail. And there's different kinds out there. We're going to talk about that, but something with, you know, a good action, not a crazy. The other thing that's so nice about uh, paddle tail swim baits is as a bank angler, you've got different options. So you can go with like, a belly weighted weedless hook so if you've still got you know wood or you've got some like leftover dead vegetation and stuff that you're getting tangled in you can go with something like that and avoid that you're not going to get hung up all the time where you know as you might if you're fishing like a, a spinner bait or uh, you know chatter bait or whatever you can go completely weedless with it and not get hung up and that's a great point to bring up is you know a lot of times as those fish are coming up from deeper water especially you know if you've got a, a lake or something you're fishing that's bigger where you know they were out in 30 some feet of water they're going to start coming up to those staging areas right you'll hear people talk about that main points secondary points points where they can go to coming out of that deeper water as they go up into those shallow flats or wherever it is you know they're going to spawn on your lake or pond wherever that might be um, but the, the paddle tail is such a great way to attack that because if you notice, they're all, you know, you've got a, a pond, right? You've just got a round pond. I have people say that all the time. It's shaped like a fishbowl. I don't have a bunch of docks or anything to fish, right? Well, those fish are going to move up to spots where they've got a hard bottom, something they can spawn on. It might be a little brush pile on the side of that pond. It might be, a, you know, a boulder like this size where they can get next to it and feel comfortable. Somewhere where they can have like a gravelly, harder bottom uh, and spawn and make that nest there so if you notice they are all stacked up and they're on like a, a rock or a, a you know a piece of brush you can throw this in there without fear of getting hung up and get as close as you can to it because you know if they're tucked up on something like that and just not super aggressive you can get it right on top of them right by them where it's an easy meal and they can just you know and react to it as opposed to if you're trying to fish a spinnerbait you don't want to get too close to that brush so you're fishing three four feet off of it you might not ever get those bites you might need to get right up on top of them with that uh, you know or you know be coming almost through that stuff to get them to react the other nice thing about a, a soft plastic swim bait is you've got options so for example you could go I think this is a Hayabusa hook uh, just your regular belly weighted swim bait hook nothing special about it no you know flashes rattles or anything a very natural presentation if you've got you know clear water or kind of finicky fish uh, now the sun comes out or you've got a little bit of dirt and you want to add a little bit of flash to it you can go with that like owner flashy uh, flashy swimmer you can see it's got the little wire there and the thing with these I have find they kind of break off easy so I'm kind of looking for some other stuff just to test out but that's been my favorite to use in the past and like I was saying before, you can go with just a regular open hook. So if you're not fishing around a bunch of cover, you're fishing more open water, you're, you know, slow crawling this on kind of a hard fishing flat, great option there. And then, of course, you've seen me use these a ton in the past, those old Cumberland, uh, I think I actually had, I set one out here somewhere. There it is, old stubby dog knocked it off. But that was their old one. You've seen me talk about that before. I love these because they were cost effective. They came in a two-pack, so, you know, instead of spending like, six seven dollars on one interspun you can get a, a two pack like this they breed on their heads so i haven't fished the new head style yet i like the change it's more of like a rounded head instead of just the regular you know kind of flat generic looking head but these work darn well i know you know people have their own molds where they make these but that little underspin right there with that open hook is awesome it's been probably four or five years ago me and dad were fishing uh, early spring on one of my local lakes 
uh, and I was crushing them on that that exact thing right there with like a bluegill colored trailer. That's all they would hit. Um, I know Randizzle's a huge fan of the underspin. He likes the Berkeley Fusion, whatever their uh, underspin is. He's a huge fan of that. Now, when it comes to the soft plastics, again, there's a ton of different options. That six cents whale, I want to try that. Um, normally, I'm going with something just a little bit smaller. My favorite paddle tail on the market. I'm not sponsored by them. I just love their stuff. Again, that reaction innovations, either the skinny dipper or the smaller little dipper. Um, it's been a couple years ago, Randizzle and I were fishing, and that little, uh, little dipper in that shiner color destroyed them as well with just a little darter head. Um, so something like that. You can get into like a, a Kitek type, you know, that more ribbed look to it. Uh, like the Rage Swimmer is another one. Um, and then you can kind of get into the custom poured stuff. So I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of those guys right there, the Epic Nugget. Thank you, Mr. Marling and Nick Rundle. I'm sure they will have some of these up uh, sometime for sale or whatnot. But hit those guys up over at the Bait Cave. Beautiful looking little dudes there that they made. Uh, lucky to get a few of those to try out. But I got to see them in action. They look great. Real subtle tail wag to it. You can see not a huge long tail, just a nice subtle motion. And then again, like some of those uh, epic prey baits too. Again, same thing. Not a super crazy action on it, but again, a smaller swim bait. So don't be afraid to check out some of those smaller companies. You all know I'm trying to, to check out the smaller companies, uh, you know, the homemade type stuff more this year and help support them. But tons of good options out there. Find something that you like and roll with it. All right, last, but certainly not least, lure number five on my list. Y'all didn't think I was going to talk about spring fishing without a spinnerbait, did ya? Most certainly one of my absolute favorite all-time confidence lures ever is the spinnerbait. There's a whole bunch of different kinds out there. Uh, for me, when I was younger getting into fishing, all I ever wanted to fish was the mans. You know, Hank Parker was the man to me, one of the guys growing up that I uh, looked up to. Of course, Bill Dance as well. You can see his hat over there. Loved watching those guys, but you know, Hank had so much success and really put the spinnerbait out there as you know, being an awesome lure, then you look at guys like Kevin Van Dam, how many, you know, tournaments and stuff they won on spinnerbaits. Um, you know, multiple different guys over the years, but the spinnerbait is something that's been around. Um, you know, it hasn't really changed a lot, and it still catches a ton of fish. It's mimicking that little bait ball of fish, right? You've got kind of the main fish, and then you've got the flash. You've got vibration. It looks like, you know, just a little bait ball of fish. So, you know, those, those early spring days, not when the water's super cold, I don't start out with them, but as the water starts to warm up, you know, closer to 50 degrees, you've got a little ripple on the water, you've got a little bit of cloudy sky, oh my gosh, it's like perfect spinnerbait weather. You know, you're rolling that baby like within a foot of the surface, you've got that little ripple or chop on the water to help kind of disguise it. Uh, man, you can draw some really fun, aggressive bites. Um, not, you know, not only that way, but you can go up to, you know, something like if you're fishing cold, muddy water, you know, a lot of the river guys are going to go with like a big Colorado blade. Uh, it puts out more vibration, more thump. Um, you know, those fish are often in that real muddy, dirty water going to be up shallower. And they're throwing this to try to get those fish to focus in on that, give them that target to hit. So, you know, there's a ton of different options out there. Of course, War Eagle is one of my favorites of all time. I know Randazza loves those as well. Um, again, the Nichols Pulsator, awesome one that I've had a bunch of success with. Um, and then some of the Strike Kings. This is that, what do they call it, Premier Plus. Had good luck with those. Booyah makes some good spinner baits. I've got an old Booyah that did work. That thing finally fell apart. I don't remember what it was, but it was one of their older, older ones. Um, awesome, awesome spinner bait. I've even been trying out some of the new stuff, like this Jacob Wheeler Accent. Um, caught a couple fish on that last year, uh, late in the fall. Great action to it, runs nice and true. And then there's, you know, there's places putting out, you know, kind of weird funky stuff. I'm gonna try an orange spinnerbait this year. I know Cumberland Lures makes a Tequila Sunrise spinnerbait. Tequila Sunrise, one of my favorite colors, shout out to Pops. You know, people will say that like the willow blades, these longer spikier blades are gonna mimic shad more. So if you're in a shad lake, throw those. Um, if you're in more of like a bluegill ponder lake, uh, you know, a Colorado blade, even a little bit smaller Colorado blade or Kind of that in between an Indiana blade, which is almost like a teardrop. Again, different choices out there. You'll hear people talk about that red kicker blade early in the spring. Uh, putting that little flash of red in there sometimes can be the deal. Uh, for me, I like a 3 8 That's my favorite to throw from the bank. Uh, of course, if you're out in the boat, you could bump up to a half ounce, a little bit more distance on it. But a lot of times with the spinner bait, I'm you know casting close to targets. So I think like standing timber. I remember fishing with my dad. Standing timber and spinner baits, you know, was always a big deal. Um, as I've gone on and fished them, I'll fish them around 
rocks. If you've got rock piles and you can bang the spinner bait and knock the bottom of it against rocks, great way to fish it. Or you can throw it uh, along weed edges, weed lines. You know, different options out there. Don't be afraid to try something a little bit smaller. This is just one of those cheaper Stanleys I got last year. I know Burley, when he sent me that box, there was a, I want to say a Boyd Duckett or something, maybe, or Castaic, I don't remember what it was, a small finesse spinnerbait. And when it comes to colors, uh, just a straight white or a white and chartreuse are usually the colors that I turn to. Um, I like fishing them a little bit more stained water. Now, that doesn't mean you can't fish it in, you know, just more of a clearer, cleaner water. They've got more translucent like shad colors, or this is what do they call this, sexy purple shad. So you can see it's like more of a translucent with like a a clear see-through purple in there. You can go with, you know, like a crystal shad where it's got that little bit of flake in it, but still pretty much a, a, a see-through skirt, right? All kinds of different options. Don't be afraid to try and test different stuff out. All right, so that's gonna do it for my top five favorite spring fishing lures. The lipless, the suspending jerkbait, finesse jigs, soft plastic paddle tails, and of course, the old spinnerbait. Those five, uh, I am extremely confident that I can go anywhere with those five and catch some fish. Now, of course, there's variants, right? There's different things you can use. You know, instead of the spinnerbait when it warms up, you could use a chatterbait. Um, instead of the finesse jig, you can, you can use a Ned rig. Drop shot, you know, if, if you want to go finesse. Wacky rig, you know, into early spring. All kinds of different ways you can do it. Those are just some of my favorites. Now, comment below and let me know if there's one out of those five that you'd really like to see me go more in depth, you know, kind of how to fish as I'm out on the water, my rod, reel, line, retrieves. If there's one of those that you really want to see me go in depth on, comment below and let me know. Um, this weekend it's supposed to be like 60 here, so I'm hoping to get out for a full day, uh, maybe even a couple days, and do a bunch of spring fishing. But comment below and let me know. Tonight's subscribe fishing and friend is Greg Thompson. Greg, thank you so much for watching and supporting. Uh, thank you everybody else who continues to watch and support my channel. Like I say every time, I would be nothing. I wouldn't be here if it was not for all of you who continue to watch support. Um, I'm still surprised by the number of people who watch my videos who aren't subscribed, like 60% of views a lot of the time. So um, if you're watching and you like the content, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, bu up button. It helps me a lot, but uh, that's it for me. I got to get all this on the computer and edit. So enough yapping. Thank you all very much for watching. Until next time.